Eric Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. It's another beautiful day here in Cincinnati at EAG HQ, and we are going to go over this 1990 E30 M3. It is sterling silver metallic over a silver leather interior, and it's part of the South Carolina collection that we've just recently brought to market. And this car with just a scotch under 99,000 miles is a really nice car that is more stock than, than not, uh, very, very original in, in all the important ways and certainly shows extremely well. It is right there between driver and, uh, oh, there's our transporter. Hey, Mark. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that's one of uh, many of our transporters, and uh, that's how all of our cars come and go. And, uh, well, uh, he's been <laughs> carrying our cars for quite a long time, and he's a very reliable and great guy, and uh, that's how we, uh, of course, uh, deliver the EAG experience at the end of uh, the, the uh, first uh, lap when uh, you are acquiring your EAG car. Uh, he's, of course, uh, picking up some more cars and dropping some more off. So um, uh, the Sterling, uh, Sterling Silver Metallic E30 M3, uh, and well, it's joined by quite a few other EAG cars that uh, have been on the channel here recently. Uh, and we'll kind of maybe skim over those here, I guess, real quick. Um, uh, this is a, a one owner, uh, 1M. Uh, well, it's originally acquired from the first owner, that is, and we've sold it to the second uh, EAG owner uh, down in Georgia. The car is now available. It is an 11,000 mile car. And do see the video on that car uh, on the channel. That's a really fun uh, video. I, I had a lot of fun making that, a lot of cool, fun drives. And this is the uh, six speed Lime Rock that EAG just recently acquired. This is one of four of the BMW North America press cars, six speed cloth interior, black wheel option. Uh, cool fun fact about the Lime Rocks, uh, they were used uh, press wise quite a long time uh, after the end of the E92 run and, and were done so to kind of bridge that gap 2014 where there was not an M3 and uh, the the cars went around made a lot of different appearances at different events um, uh, tracks this car was at road Atlanta for a bit did go to Lime Rock and Matt Russell the M brand director that came up with the Lime Rock M3 uh, concept uh, actually uh, drove this uh, vehicle around track with uh, some family members I believe his father and his uh, brother so a lot of cool memories uh, uh, with this car and appreciate those guys giving us the full back uh, story and scoop on this car uh, that uh, will be on the website soon and uh, do see some videos uh, both a quick one uh, as well as uh, some more coming up we're going to rejuvenate or call it restore that front bumper to get rid of those front license plate uh, holes because that's what happens when you're in new jersey stay tuned for this first look another eag repeat car this is the third time we've had this blue water on caramel it's an 02 m5 with some dining bits 34,000 miles young uh, more to come on that the most recent eag e39 m5 first look on this 2003 silver on Silverstone with 33,000 miles, also a three-time EAG repeat visitor, has just sold. It sold actually the same day that we dropped the first look video on that car. And a 2013 M3 Competition DCT stripper, no hump, does not have navigation. It's got some really cool choice upgrades that we have uh, put the majority of uh, on after we'd acquired the car from the first owner. Sold to the second owner, bought it back, and now it's going to the third owner, another uh, EAG client. Uh, looking forward to his experience and uh, hearing his feedback when that car arrives. No different than the feedback we're going to receive from uh, the owner of this 1990 M3, the new owner, the new enthusiast that will be the fourth owner of this car. It has lived the majority of its life not far from here in Louisville, Kentucky. That's how you say it, Louisville. And uh, uh, the majority of the mileage and time uh, was logged in the uh, Kentucky region and thankfully was done during days like today. Uh, beautiful. Uh, no uh, salt, no oxidation, no corrosion, no rust anywhere on this car. We are going to get inside the EAG's workshop and review the mechanical findings, do a kind of a PPI overview with uh, one of the EAG pit crew, Mr. Mike Country. He's going to give us his assessment of the car. We've uh, done a uh, condition report as well as a compression test and uh, uh, smoke test, all kinds of all kinds of tests, about an eight, nine hour process to really uh, give the car the what for to write that EAG rejuvenation roadmap. And um, you know, six or seven pages later or so, uh, we've got a full outline of what we're going to do to make this car ready for that next enthusiast home as a turnkey car. So we're looking forward to bringing you in the workshop for that. Uh, the car is fully repainted and was done so by the most recent South Carolina collector. Uh, all of that is documented and the door I've just opened is the only panel on the car that's not original. Uh, we have dug in deep to identify what and where. I, I need to go through all the records. I've not done that yet, but I uh, have not found anything that would indicate any foul uh, play and all of the, the jams and seams and seals 
everything is original. The car's not uh, had any type of accident history or anything that is irregular that we can find or tell. So that's certainly important. And back uh, in the day when it, you had some damage, uh, when these cars were not quite the collectible cars that they are today, it was a lot um, more commonplace just to replace the body panel than, than to fix a damaged one. It was cheaper, too. And insurance companies and or uh, owners would say, well, I don't want filler and all that stuff in it. Just give me a new panel from BMW because those are the only ones that were available, and that was what was done. Being a 90, it's the first year for the uh, airbags on the E30 M3s. And also being a 90, it's the first year they had the optional heated seats. Little things like the rejuve will include, uh, you know, do we want to change that uh, window lockout switch? It's original and faded, and, uh, you know, the, the defrost switch has got a little bit of, um, you know, breaks in. The, it's used. It's, it's got some wear. And, and those are the type of things that we would typically replace in, when we're going to full, full, 100% uh, uh, rejuve. Those are called the EAG Extra Mile Services. A lot of places, obviously, are probably not paying attention to that, and you know, the switch still works. Why, why replace it? Well, uh, because we can and we can make them better, no different than these seatbelt buttons that are just a little bit discolored. They weren't uh, uh, that color when they were new, and yes, we can change those if we want to make them uh, new again. Uh, they're not very expensive. The headliner is in really good shape. The C pillars, the A pillars, the B pillars are all in good shape. Uh, these are not typically uh, problems on the E30s. These bowed uh, fabric headliners are quite robust. The front seats have been recovered and recovered well, and again, that's documented in the car's history file that is in the trunk. It's quite a thick folder, frankly, and there's a lot of dollars that have been invested into this car. Uh, that repaint, again, was also fully documented and is in this binder. Uh, we have taken the car and the trunk apart. Uh, we're going to be putting a new uh, battery in the car, of course, before it leaves. That's uh, got some age to it. We've checked in all the corners and crevices, just making sure there's no oxidation or rust, but I'll let uh, the EAG pit crew uh, share that with you in the workshop. And just here, skimming quick, we've got some extra keys and um, no shortage of records, and I haven't counted it. Again, I haven't went through it in a real detailed manner, but um, I'm sure there's, um, oh, 15, 20 grand, maybe more, in service records. And uh, by the time this video goes out, if you want to see uh, all of that stuff, we can certainly share that with a seriously interested party. Uh, all, overall, really great car, and I'd like to go and show you all the imperfections on the car, but, um, well, there aren't really that many. The, the wheels are original. They've not been refinished. That's probably going to be the most used thing cosmetically on the car, and, you know, they're, they're not real weathered. They, they're not showing signs of, of heavy oxidation, again, not being uh, ex exposed to, to sitting outside for long periods of time. Same with the dash, you're not going to see any cracks. Uh, that's going to be a really good indicator that the car has spent a long period of time outside. Uh, those dashes will uh, sh end up uh, shrinking a bit if they've been to high heat and high UV um, you know, exposure conditions. The quality of the repaint is quite good. It is not a Concorde repaint, but it's also not a, a, a you know, quick, fast and loose uh, Earl Shive job either. Uh, we've uh, just given the car a quick wash just frankly a week ago when the car arrived and yeah we got some dirt and whatnot on it from the storage and it's actually been rained on a little bit to, as uh, the rain just kind of came through here as a quick pop-up storm but uh, oh, you know after a rain it still looks pretty darn good uh, the other wheels on this side we're gonna see uh, we're gonna be putting new tires on we're gonna be doing a 10-year service with all fluids and filters and you know this car is gonna be uh, delivered turnkey ready to drive and enjoy Price point wise, uh, everybody likes to know what stuff is worth and selling for these days. And we've done a pretty careful analysis of the market, both with uh, the external sales, of course, with EAG sales uh, included in that uh, sample. We've thankfully been selling quite a few E30 M3s over the years and know the market pretty well. And, um, you know, this car is uh, something that uh, will serve the next owner well and, and do so at an $85,000 price point. That's going to include the EAG rejuve work that we'll be sending to you to give you a good overview of what all of that stuff is. So it'll be in the data file that we'll be happy to, to forward to you. Uh, mechanically, uh, the car is really great. Uh, we've uh, done the compression test, which was, uh, well, I'll let the, the workshop uh, segment speak to that. Uh, just a really tidy car. It's, it's stock, uh, a couple little deviations such as the spark plug wires and a little bit of suspension stuff, but um, you know, it, it's not been a, a track car, it's never had a roll cage put in it, it's never been um, cut on or, or again uh, corroded or rusty. The windshield seals and gaskets are all in good shape, the cowl's in good shape. Um, you know, these are all the things that we're checking to mitigate risk for the next guy and, and you know, I, I'm 
quite happy with this card. It actually is um, a bit nicer than what I was expecting, and that's always a, a pleasant surprise and not uh, always the case when you're buying um, you know, out-of-state sight unseen. But thankfully, this uh, collector is a very well-known uh, uh, member of the community and a very dear friend of EAG for a very long time. And uh, so it's very, um, uh, we're very, very happy to be able to, to take uh, charge and, and keep these cars in great homes. And that's part of, uh, you know, uh, the EAG way. And, and if you're ever interested in selling your beloved car and keeping it in a great home, you know, that's where all these cars have come from. And I, I certainly would love to thank everybody that has sold cars to us over the years. And a lot of those guys end up buying cars from us again. And, and repeat business is certainly um, the best kind of business and, and uh, uh, treated, obviously, uh, as it should be and, and where we can give some flexibility uh, we always will when we've obviously done business multiple times and the more deals we do the better the deals get but uh, being able to keep these cars in great homes is, is part of selling a car to EAG and you're going to have peace of mind that uh, the car is going to go to another loving enthusiast that will protect uh, your investment and keep the car in, in uh, you know great working order and, and run it and drive it and have fun with it and share it with others and that's part, you know the best part about the hobby and, and uh, certainly looking forward to getting some seat time with this special car so Let's uh, jump in the workshop and uh, take a, a lap uh, on the underside and, and go through everything with uh, uh, Mr. Mike Country. We're now inside EAG's workshop number one, and we're yet again with uh, one of the EAG pit crew, Mr. Mike Country. And we're going to review this 1990 Sterling Silver M3. The PPI has been completed. The compression test has been done. Uh, the smoke test has been done. And we've got a really good overview now of what this car is. We're going to share that with you, go over the findings, go over some of the recent uh, updates and upgrades that have been performed on this car in the last couple of years. And, and frankly, this is a really nice car. It's got a lot of new parts on it, a lot of the stuff that, uh, well, is hard to get these days, like a new muffler from BMW. And um, uh, the compression is really strong, isn't it? It's like 218 to 225 across the board. So. <laughs> That's healthy. So um, uh, let's dive in. Uh, I'm going to pass the baton over here to Mike and uh, go ahead and uh, take us for a, a lap, Mike. All right, we did the typical steps, smoke test, very minor leakage between the uh, intake gaskets and the head, kind of normal, so we'll take care of that. Like he was saying, the compression test across the board, 218, 225. Um, it's got new wires and stuff on it, which aren't the uh, typical black BMW. Uh, belts are good. All the bushings are good. We need a little work on the AC bushings. But under the hood, all in all, good condition. Couple like little things like that. That is not correct, which we'll make sure it's right. But all in all, pretty clean. Uh, as far as body goes, we've got all of our VIN tags on every body panel, sans. Except uh, the driver's door. Or passenger door. Oh, yeah, passenger door. Yeah, yep. and backward passenger door. And then yep. the VIN tag on the side of the head looks like it just kind of weathered off. So okay. It's MIA. We do have the original yellow throttle body caps, which is going to denote that that's never been opened up. Yep. Um, we've got our typical uh, uh, seal around the oil filler cap that's leaking, but easy, uh, cheap stuff to, to update. Um, maybe let's take us a, a lap on the underside. All right, yep, we can go on it. Uh, we've got original finish wheels that are very good for the age and mileage. They're not new. Um, uh, they have not been refinished. Uh, that is something that uh, in the uh, EAG uh, extra lap if we want to, the, the I guess uh, extra mile services. To note that absolutely no rust under the battery. It's kind of all back together now. And then underneath here, there's clean as a whistle too. There's no rust forming. You got a little dust, but there's no rust itself, so. Good. And I think we'll probably update that battery at final inspection, I think, right? Yeah. And uh, look at this. We've got some records. We've got the original owner's manual. We've got some extra keys and a uh, whole lot of service history. Uh, the ownership uh, lineage started to, uh, in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, and then it uh, went to Michigan, uh, where uh, actually the South Carolina collector met the second owner, uh, the Michigan resident that had cared for this car for quite a few years. Most of the mileage was incurred by the first owner, and all that will be on the history report that we'll send to any prospective uh, new uh, caretaker. The, car's been in South Carolina since 2013 and uh, of course we did the, uh, was, uh, the, yeah, the collector excuse me did the full repaint on the car in the sterling silver which certainly is uh, such a dynamic and, and really cool cool color uh, so I guess starting here from the back Mike uh, uh, take us through like you mentioned before new BMW muffler uh, it's got H&R springs Bilstein shocks all four corners front struts and H&R Still has the rubber hoses, which mm -hmm. we'll address that during a brake flush, whether they flow or not. 
they may get replaced. And it's nice that it doesn't have the stainless steel brake lines back there. That's typically going to denote the car's seen a lot of track time yeah, as it doesn't through. So. Uh, we've got a new genuine muffler, and actually uh, EAG supplied this muffler uh, back, I think, in 2015. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, we sent it to them. Uh, diff mount solid, no cracks at all. And that's an updated mount, too. Yeah, it's updated. It doesn't have the gap here. So. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, little, uh, the straps are starting to stretch out a little bit. Yeah, we'll change those. Mm -hmm. Super Sprint center section, which that's actually very, very similar to the European resonator, isn't it? Like on the Evo 2s. Yeah. Um, right. Shift shaft seal is dry. Output shaft seal is dry. Newer Guibo, but got a little bit of leakage from the case. We'll try and tighten the bolts up, see if it, or it mm -hmm. could even be coming back from where the original service was. You got a mm -hmm. little bit around the drain plug. Mm -hmm. um, Slate cylinder is newer. And here we do have a stainless line on the supply for that and for the front calipers so somebody's been in there and done some work mm -hmm. and we've got a full list of everything that the south carolina collector and the most recent owner before him did that we'll send to the next guy a lot of new parts under here yeah newer control arms bushings are all good here you can see it's got newer motor mounts mm -hmm. does not have the braces welded into the subframe but there are no cracks you can visibly see up in there and there's mm -hmm. no cracks around the bolts a little power steering leak, or is that a little? It's a little bit of a power steering leak from up on top. Okay. Um, bottom side of the engine is, from the oil pan and everything, everything's dry, but from the top side, you kind of got some working down from the front and valve cover. Mm -hmm. uh, bushings on this one also for the AC starting to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. It's kind of normal with time. Yep. Mm. Anything else? This is uh, pretty solid, huh? I mean, I don't see any signs of any past... Uh, a trauma or collision or anything no. do you it's got some like cosmetic paint work done to it but i've seen no collision damage or anything detrimental to it so yeah uh, and then we've got in the passenger door uh we've yeah, got kind of see the dot tag be right up under here okay there it's we go painted over but yep and uh sorry there we go so that's going to be the replacement sticker. And if you look just at the right light, it's going to be hard here on the video, but you, you can, can just actually see a, a DOT hyphen R. It's going to stand for Department of Transportation Replacement. And uh, I don't see any um, signs of, of trauma. Or, uh, we did check inside the jams, uh, both yeah. sides, and I didn't see anything. Did you see anything that was of uh, concern? Yeah. Nothing concerned. I mean, all the undercoating, everything looks normal, undisturbed. We'll have to check the record book. There might be something in there for that uh, door as well. Gotcha. Well, that uh, is, a, I think, a clean uh, clean lap on the yeah. underside, Mike. Um, yeah, uh, how many pages call. did you write? Uh, I think we're sitting at like five or six. So. Well, that's uh, not too terrible. And It'll certainly addressed and brought the par. So. We'll translate that to a digital uh, a copy of a report going over everything that EAG is performing on our rejuve on this one. We're gonna go a little further with this one uh, than we uh, previously thought, just because the car is so darn good and, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's a really great driver. Uh, a lot of guys would even, you know, uh, call this a, a stronger car than that. I, I, it's not a number one car, um, but it's certainly um, much closer to a two than a three. I would, I would say right there in the middle at a, a two condition level would be accurate to describe this car now that we've got a really good uh, understanding and perspective and it's more stock than modified, isn't it? Um, we've got just a couple of real tasteful things, you know, between the, the resonator and the suspension, but stock sway bars, um, I'll have to double check to see if it has a performance chip. Yeah. But um, outside of that, um, you know, it's just a real pure, honest uh, survivor that can be used and driven and enjoyed, and it's uh, the rarest uh, color uh, BMW brought to North America, which certainly I'm sure was kind of hard to let go of the collection of one of every color, this being the, probably the <laughs> hardest one to, to have uh, found. So. Uh, thanks, Mike, for giving us a tour, yeah, and no uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take this car for a drive later, and, and looking forward to sharing this car with any and every uh, fellow enthusiast as we continue to process these cars. Uh, if you have any questions on this car or any of the other uh, cars from the South Carolina collection, you know what to do. Drop us a line. Uh, we will be happy to fill you in on everything, and I guess one uh, quick lap through the workshop here. We've got the Techno Violet E36 M3 that is sold and is getting its rejuve work completed, and Getting ready to head out to a new owner in California. We've got a new trade-in, a Z4 uh, 3.5 IS that's getting its mechanical inspection. Uh, how are we looking under here, Tim? Good. Pretty good? good. Any, uh, wow, it's pretty dry, no uh, corrosion or anything. That's always good. 
20,000 miles. We'll uh, take a closer look at this and maybe do a video on this car later. And then, uh, hey, yep, that's an E36 M3 GT that is just barely 25 years old. It's actually still inside its birthday month uh, as of right now. And uh, got to be one of the first GTs in North America, if not the first uh, full length feature film coming on this really, really sweet, unique, uh, very rare uh, homologation car for the European market, uh, fresh in from Sweden. So stay tuned for this E36 M3 GT. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe for more. And, uh, well, see ya. <laughs>